Hello, welcome to Garden Chronicles. In today's video, I'm going to talk about a little bit on the extension version of this Anthurian plants, more like part 2 from my earlier video. Here in this particular video, I will be talking about how I propagate my anthuriums using the bare stem cutting and how I transfer them from stage 1 to stage 2. Also on some essential matters on how to care for this particular plant. So sit back and enjoy the show. Just a few general information, anthurium plants do span out into a huge variety, both species and hybrids. Often these are split into two categories where there is a flowering type known as flamingo flowers and the other variety which is the one that I am currently cultivating for as ornament plants. These are basically more for the foliage beauty. Coming to the terms, these are the ones that I managed to get in my hands as they are considered currently as trending plants. Often than not, they are now sp spanning into a very expensive prices of which I may not able to purchase them. Somehow to cater for the general public, most of this particular species plants have been hybridized and so these actually make them hardier and able to handle the lowland uh, climate zone, especially when it comes to the hot and dry weather together with the wet and humid weather. So in these two extremes, this particular types of anthuriums able to handle this kind of plant stress. Now coming back to my anthuriums, these I have planted first in these temporary cups for them to stabilize as they have do not have a rooting structure. When I first got them as stem cuttings, they are actually without roots. It would roughly take about 3 months time in duration for them to show any growth process and also they are in high risk factor as these stems cuttings may not able to produce and or show any uh, sign of growth and also may able to rot in the process. So it, it also depends on certain species, some show quick growth process and some take a longer time frame. So basically I've actually finished my introduction on this particular one. Let's come to how to propagate them using bare stem cutting. Normally in most vendors and plant uh, personnel they only will sell this plant stem cuttings and normally it will appear in this kind of uh, in appearance. These are extremely affordable. Uh, I actually purchased this particular per piece about RM60 Ringgit. Uh, this particular one is a black mamba. Uh, what I want to mention to you here is that if you were to purchase a fully grown plant with roots and leaves, it may easily fetch about 2000 3000 so in a way what I'm actually doing is I'm actually getting a shortcut of it and I'm okay with buying in this cheapest price as possible. And of course a lot of patience is required where you actually have to wait for about a few months to actually see the growth and also face the risk that you might lose everything. Now this particular piece is actually very healthy. You can actually see there are nodes here with the young saplings that it can actually grow and there are some root structure there that is already ready to grow. So far based on my experience on all of the bare stem cuttings that I've actually planted, I had 100% success in all of them and so I would like to share my experience on how I cultivate them and grow them. So the first thing that you need to do is set them up into this kind of a cup setting. Some gardeners take the risk of 
planting planting straight using the bare stem cutting to the spotting soil medium and the high risk factor of the whole stem turning into a rod is there so what i normally do here is that i will set it up separately first as stage one in growing them in cup in a sterile condition so that there would not be any rotting problems that might occur now let's get to the ingredients used here this is actually the bare root stem and this is the cup that i'm going to use for the propagation you can actually notice that i have actually made some holes about one inch away from the base just uh, take note to wash the cup properly so that you don't have any uh, contamination I actually use scissors, actually put it on a stuff and just poke through the the cup, the plastic cup and it is just uh, done very firmly. You can actually use various way based on what you are comfortable with. Just take note that the cup fits the bare root stem because if it's too small then it defeats the purpose. I'm actually using a Coca-Cola bottle. This is one of the gas bottles that I actually uh, recycled back, actually cut into half and uh, also made some holes just like the earlier one. And uh, just double check whether it can fit nicely in between. I'm actually planting them diagonally. I don't want to put it upright because chances are I'm actually looking for more than one or two uh, buds to form okay when it comes to a cup what i'm actually using is i actually put a stone here based on my experience sometimes when you have everything that is just polite and all of the materials here are actually very light they can actually topple over so putting a stone there actually helps a little bit of weight and keep everything stable uh, just like any other contacts after putting a stone i'm actually using a, a cotton fiber just to hold the water a little bit of that and after that i'm actually using uh, coconut chips these are actually uh, soft cut and i find that uh, this is much more easier to use you can actually buy them in your normal uh, nursery store also i'm using these uh, lacquer balls actually you can use whatever that is in your hands and this particular one i'm, I'm just trying to fill up as much as possible And I'm just checking through whether it can fit properly. I can actually cut into half if I want to, but uh, it has more better chances if it's actually in as one piece. But again, uh, if you are an experienced gardener and you want to try out uh, according to what favors you most, go ahead. But for this tutorial, I'm just showing to you on a baseline what actually works best and uh, finally at the top i'm actually using uh, perlite okay the other thing here is that do take note to know where is the base and where is the top do not reverse this because it's going to be a havoc and so this is a complete piece and this is how actually it looks like uh, most of the environment uh, the element here is more closer to being sterile uh, do not put any fertilizer on it because you don't want uh, any uh, activities to take place as uh, any of the microbes or anything of those kinds because uh, as for now you just want the natural uh, element of the root growth to take place by itself what would do work best would be a rooting hormone see if you can get a uh, liquid form that will be a best uh, deal for it but if you don't have any then it's just fine so basically that's about it is this as simple as it gets the factor that i have not yet prepared a label but i'm just showing to you is that always keep a label the little bit of the name and the date that is being actually uh, set for a planting this is actually goes in a long way so this is the basic set that i've already done I want to show to you this is at least about three months plus and I've noticed that not much of growth has actually taken place. Uh, my idea here is that I want to trans transfer uh, all this uh, 
pieces of stem into a regular potting mix and I'm actually checking on the condition of the plant as you can see there's not much of growth here there's no root growth there is a little bit slight uh, bud growth but other than that nothing not much of uh, any new activities that actually taken place so this one I'm going to hold on first uh, I'm not going to change uh, anything of the sort for at this moment of time Coming back to the second one, if you can notice here, there is two new leaf growth here and on the stem. Uh, this is also close to the date. If you can see it clearly, it's somewhere on the 6th of December. I've actually planted it and you redo this all these labels all over again. Anyway, there's two leaves growth here. But however, I've checked through and there is no strong root growth over it don't want to disturb so much but it but just roughly check through and i see that uh, nothing of a strong root growth or nothing visible so i'm just going to leave it and let the root ball take more development before i change to the this particular supposed potting medium the one of the important things here is that because this is a sterile environment or not, it will not grow very well for more for at this moment of time However, the root growth is the most important factor because if there is no roots, then I would not uh, want to disturb it because the plant can go dormant. This is another one. It's actually a dark form. Also on the 6th. And, uh, it, I, and this looks very promising. You can see some growths on the roots all around uh, at the perimeter of the cup. So you can see here and uh, this particular plant would be a, a likely candidate that i would want to change the potting medium one of the most important things about growing them in a cup is that always keep the cup in a plastic container which is transparent so you can actually check on them immediately and if there's any problems or any rot you can actually immediately take action on it by using a fungicide or even if there is a infect insect infestation you can also attend to it as immediately as possible so you can see over here there are a very healthy root growth over here and it looks very promising that i, I may want to change this potting medium so yeah some gardeners may want to keep it as it is without changing the potting medium uh, yes they can do so uh, in my case i would not often change it because i want the plant to grow bigger and more stable and uh, it actually will help the plant to become more hardy because keeping them just in polite alone may not be uh, in a long-term basis let's look at the materials that i'm actually using this i'm just using a a regular pot uh, flower pot i think this is uh, something not too big not too small just nice uh, and as usual i'll use this uh, cook, uh, cotton fiber and uh, just to help on the drainage hole and sand this is basically construction sand or any sand that you can actually get your hands on i find sand is a very good uh, uh, fast draining medium and let's say if you can't find sand uh, you can actually use uh, perlite also but i find perlite is being very expensive and sand seems to be a very good uh, uh, alternative this is coconut chips as i mentioned earlier i actually collect all these uh, around the uh, our neighborhood and actually trim them by myself because i find that this uh, these are the resources available around my neighborhood and uh, for fertilizer i'm actually using compost and i find compost seems to be a very stable uh, medium to use in comparison to uh, any other fertilizer so let's get started for my drainage hole i'm actually using the cotton fiber as you can see i'm just putting it just nicely where you can actually sit in very well also it actually regulates uh, uh, over watering so this will just keep it very nice and moist after placing the cotton fiber, I'm actually putting in the compost. I actually, I normally use a little bit of uh, more on a generous amount of compost because after this, I'm not going to put any fertilizer on it. And I find that uh, this is very stable. It actually doesn't burn the plant. And also, I'm just putting it at the base because I find that I'm letting the roots to slowly grow and reach over there so in a way it, it is actually how do you say 
uh, very stable. So the, actually another factor I'm actually using is that I'm actually putting uh, layers. That means in the, after the cotton fiber, I'm actually using the compost followed by coconut chips and then uh, the sand. Then I'm doing it all over again. So in, in a way there is two layers here. So it, this this is the way that I actually handle it and I find that uh, by placing layers it is not overwhelming for the plant to grow and it appears to be like very very much uh, on a stability factor. Another alternative that can be used apart from these coconut chips could be also uh, this uh, styrofoam but I find that styrofoam do not have any uh, organic materials in it. it seems to be very sterile so I prefer to use a little bit more on that. Okay, after this coconut chips, I'm actually layering it with sand. As you can see, I'm actually compressing it just to give a little bit of a body. So in case a root were to grow, they would actually have a, a little bit of a room to grow. Okay, this is a very important part. Uh, I'm actually removing the root ball carefully. So I don't want to damage it. So before I do so, I just roughly... Uh, estimate how deep is a root ball is going to fall into the place. So after the sand, I'm actually putting another set of compost, uh, very lightly, not not too thick. Based on my experience, uh, I would not recommend you to put any fertilizer. Perhaps manure might work, the chicken manure or goat manure. Manure. Uh, however, I find that even manure seems to become uh, very strong and can burn the plant. Uh, also, I find that the osmocot can have a reverse effect if overly used. So after the compost, I'm actually la uh, layering with the cocoa chips, as you can see over here, and also a little bit of sand. So do take note to be very careful about uh, removing the root ball from the cup. If you need to, use a chopstick or something that is flat so that you can actually uh, take out the root ball without damaging it. Here I'm actually just carefully compressing it and loosening the root ball so that it will come out properly. Uh, also not necessary that you need to shake off everything out of from the root ball. You can actually use uh, whatever that comes together with it. It's okay because you don't want to disturb as uh, as as much as possible. Try not to disturb it and uh, because uh, it can actually face uh, shock and may go dormant and even the leaves may drop off so do call, how do you say uh, do take note and be cautious about it not to damage anything so patience is the key take your time if you are rushing for time then don't do this uh, it's very much therapeutic so uh, enjoy yourself in, in while gardening don't stress yourself up uh, so so you see, they just gently and the whole thing comes out carefully. Don't accidentally drop the whole cup down. It might snap and break the leaf and it'll take another one month for the leaf to grow back. So this is a very slow growing plant. Uh, any slight growth is actually takes in a month's time. That means the new leaf will take another one more month. A little bit of that will take another one more month. So the duration of growth is actually one month old. So it's a very slow growing plant. And any accidents, a silly mistake is going to cost you another one month in waiting. So it's, it's really, how do you say, a uh, really patient, bear, patient bearing plant. So, so actually, I, as I mentioned, I always plant them at the site. As you can see, I just carefully layer it and don't want to damage the root ball. So basically, that's that just that so you sit on top of the medium so eventually the root the roots may will grow and will actually fasten itself with all this medium but for now this is the best it is so uh, carefully uh, put in the cocoa chips and everything just just layer it carefully and that's about that that's all so I'm actually uh, placing uh, the coconut chips to fasten it so it won't shake off fall off accidentally anything like that and uh, and this actually there, there's no hard and fast rule that you have to put a, this number of coconut chips and all that I think basically this is how I actually do it so as simple as it is uh, very effective 
Another factor about coconut chips, do check on them. You don't want to have any snails or slugs sitting on it because that will actually cause more damage than good. So finally, I'm actually topping it up with uh, sand. I find that sand seems to sort of like anchor the coconut chips from falling apart while watering. At the same time, everything is perfectly tucked in. It uh, seal off the moisture and uh, stabilize the root ball and plant. So basically, that's about that. That's all that is needed. Uh, no hard signs on this. As simple as this. This is the very easy material, sand, coconut chips and compost. So very much the transference of stage 1 to stage 2 from cup to a potting medium. One of the important factors is that when this is done, you will find that the, the growth will be very steady and you will find that uh, it is very much stable. The other thing here is that uh, I, I will always uh, make mention that not to cover the top part of it because it's very important if it's fully buried or totally buried chances of it to have a crown rod is very high and you may have to dig out the whole thing and replant again you may have to wait for another six months to see all over again and worst case scenario if there is a stem rod on it the whole piece is gone so in in a way it's going to be trial and error uh, in your in your experience but other than that it should be as simple as this and also, also another emphasis: always keep the labels on. And if the labels is uh, the is not visible, make a new one. <laughs> I have not done that, but I shall do so as soon as possible after this video. Okay, this is uh, the earlier plant that it was in cup for some time ago, and I have transferred it into the potting media. As you can see, the older leaf and the newer leaves, and how is it? This is actually on the 20th of October, and uh, this is supposed to be a wordy hybrid. And actually, I'm surprised because it's about six months now, and this is the uh, growth factor that I'm actually seeing. So, in a way, it took about three months for it to be in a cup, and another three months in, in this condition. So, I actually transferred it when it was only a single leaf, the older leaf now as i mentioned one leaf takes about a month for it to grow and so it's a very slow and steady plant all these are actually kept in a bright shaded area they do get uh, occasionally heavy rains on them but very much control i normally water it like two days once and then i lightly missed it uh, in a way what i can say here is that right now is acclimatized and so there's so much not so much of burns so in a way as you can see there is no uh, tip burns and everything looks okay the colorization everything seems to be fine then there's nothing much to be worried about so this potting media is actually good to go actually it can last at least about two to three years until the plant has actually overgrown the pot meaning that the root ball the roots are actually growing above on the coconut chips then it will be high time for it to be repotted but other than that if everything looks okay then there's nothing much to be done actually occasionally uh, uh, spray foliar fertilizer on it maybe two weeks once and that's about that so this is how how it is as simple as it gets from stage one to stage two other than that keeping this in a bright shaded area will be just the best it can do okay, this is my journey over this particular plant this is for GTI from when I actually purchased it and I planted it you can actually see here the growth progress of the plant this is my first leaf it has not completely uh, come because it seems to be a hybrid with uh, crystallinum so crystallinum seems to be taking uh, it's a, a dominant role on it so the leaf feature of uh, forgetia have not taken place so from cup right up to a potting medium which i've done today so you can see and you can we can actually view the growing process maybe after one two years time similarly this particular one this is a, a regale a hybrid from uh, from a cup to a potting media this particular one is a very slow growing plant uh, this supposedly uh, actually a magnificum hybrid it's supposed to have a squarish uh, petiole uh, it can only be visible when the plant has grown to a matured stage 
and finally this particular one identified as uh, regale x also a very slow growing plant actually it took months for this particular leaf to form and from the cup i have actually if you can look at the leaves they are, look gorgeous slightly bigger than the, any of the anthuriums that i actually come across and i have trans changed it to this potting medium so that's that's about that that's that's all there is on this there's no hard and fire hard and fast science rules on this as simple as as it gets being practical about it this is the easiest way to do uh, plant propagation now i want to make an emphasis about this particular thing i'm actually using snail bait on this uh, it's very important not to miss this thing out because uh, knowing at this today's weather where it can be very wet and rainy at times these newly leaves are actually a magnet for slugs and snails and if there is a damage on this particular leaves boy i tell you it's going to be a heartache for you to wait for another month for a new leaf to form so this is the snail bait that i'm actually using it's more on a pink kind of uh, uh, granules and i find this this is very effective and it works very well with two two weeks to a month application just about a half teaspoon on each pot and that's that will do actually it will keep away all kind of this uh, uh, mollusk which is actually attracted to young young buds and leaves so basically this is the collection that i'm actually having apart from crystallinum and this is the ones that i've actually get it the bare root stems which i've uh, managed to collect from october last year and now it's somewhere around march six months times and these are the growth range like for uh, for this particular plant anthuriums just a side note on this uh, actually i purchased this very much earlier i think almost again like a six months time actually i bought a small plantlet this is actually grown by seed it's supposedly uh, supposed to be claren virinium uh, mixed hybrid with uh, dark form but sadly <laughs> not much of growth is available so i have stopped buying seedling ever since because i find that though they are expensive they're extremely slow growing and super sensitive and i find that uh, actually this came with uh, pafcal and uh, for our beginning it was doing well and i'm actually con i controlled the water intake on it and suddenly it looked a bit sickly when I checked through the root ball almost rotted away. So I had to undo the whole thing and replanted it back. And so it's not really doing so well. Uh, it was costly during the time that I actually bought it was during the trending time. And uh, I made a decision to get it somehow just to experience it and see how it works. And super slow growing plant. And easily can die so unless you are okay with it then go for it but if you are like me i think the bare root stem seems to produce a matured leaf within six months time which is very much satisfactory in comparison to seedlings i have now come to the conclusion of my video if you have any questions Put them in the comment below and i'll try my best to answer them uh, if it's possible please do click like and subscribe my channel thank you so much for sitting with me for this 30 minutes or so for this uh, wonderful uh, video of anthurium saying how to grow them using stem cutting thank you and i'll see you in my next video take care have a nice day bye